Oh, Where are we going? Okay, folks. We are going to check out sourwood tree. Sourwood trees are blooming. And here it is, uh, July the 4th. So we're going to see if the bees are working the trees. And hopefully, we're going to get some good food today. Okay, folks, here we are on the edge of the field taking a look at another tree species today. Here is one of the most prized trees by beekeepers, the sourwood tree. You can see how it really stands out, generally depending upon your, your uh, latitude and elevation and seasonal conditions. Uh, this tree will bloom anywhere from late June to August. It's an excellent nectar source and the honey is highly prized. Okay, here I am zoomed in. And uh, it's a little bit late in the day. We may not be able to uh, see from this distance any bees working. But earlier today, I could see several honeybees and bumblebees working these flowers. There's a couple of these trees uh, within easy reach of, of the bee yard. Here's an even younger example. It's already blooming. Uh, they don't bloom until they get about four to five years of age. Notice these leaves. They have a very characteristic look, long and slender. They are very finely serrated. It's hard to tell unless you look really close. Uh, of course, it's a deciduous tree. The leaves are alternately arranged. Uh, these, the leaves have a sour taste. How, it's named, how it got its name, sourwood. And we're going to take a look at some more examples here a little bit farther in the woods. I want you to see the, uh, the characteristic growth habit of this tree. Um. See the blooms up on that one, but as you look, as you look through the woods, look how look how crooked some of those trees are. Pretty easy to pick out the sourwoods. See if I can see that one, that one, that one, and that one. Can you get the balloons at the top? Yeah, I can get the balloons. Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, and there's a few of these right around the edge of the pond here. And one of our one of our best swarm traps is just about 40 feet away, right over there. Okay, here's, a, here's some, uh, some of the blooms that were left over from last year. That's how resilient they are through the season. And that gives them late, late season interest, too, with the, uh, how long the blooms last, even after they're not providing nectar. But once again, when you're, when you're walking through the woods trying to identify a sourwood tree just by the bark alone, you'll see... Most trees grow straight and they reach up as fast as they can to try to get to the sunlight. Well, the sourwood has a different strategy. It, it, it'll bend to try to get over to a sunny spot in the woods because it is a, an understory, mid-story tree. This is the most extreme example I've ever seen though, and I wanted to share it with you. You can see here where this tree is forked when it was young and two different branches are reaching way apart to try to get to a sunny area. And you can, you can see over there, this, this is uh, late in the evening and there's just a little bit of sun on that smallest branch over there. But once again, the, the, the characteristic bark, the characteristic growth habit, real easy to see once you get used to seeing these trees in the woods. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the sourwood tree. I've put together some slides here for us. Uh, Oxydendrum arboreum. The genus species name, uh, the Greek words oxy and dendrum literally mean acid tree. Some common names for sourwood are sorrel tree and li lily of the valley tree. As the trees get older, they have a really distinctive thick bark. And uh, after, you, after you learn to spot them, they're pretty easy to uh, recognize. They generally will get between 30 to 60 feet tall. They uh, grow best on the western slopes of uh, the Appalachians, particularly the Smoky Mountains. As we saw earlier, the leaves have a laurel-like shape with an alternate growth pattern on the stems. Uh, they can live uh, between 100 and 200 years, uh, given the right conditions. They prefer acetic soils. They don't seem to like uh, soils that are weathered off of limestone. Here's a picture of the national champion sourwood tree. It's in Amelia, Virginia. The trunk circumference is 130 inches, a height of 74 feet, and a crown spread of 47 feet. The sourwoods will bloom from early to midsummer, and those blooms will last three to four weeks. 
uh, it's uh, the the honeybees really love the sourwood. Um, they have a, a a huge supply of nectar in most years. This is an awesome photograph of a, of a beautiful, relatively young sourwood tree. It appears to be in somebody's front yard. There you can see the mailbox. But wow, uh, it'd be nice to have a dozen or so of those really close to your beehives. We've all heard of sourwood honey. It's considered by many to be some of the best in, in the world. And, uh, and so it generally uh, commands a premium price. If, uh, if, if, if you're fortunate enough to have some sourwood trees around, then, uh, then you might be lucky enough to try to, to, to capture that flow. You can watch some of a lot of Bob Benny's videos He's a master at, uh, at chasing and catching the sourwood flows. The, uh, the blooms come out on what's known as terminal inflorescences. Not a, not a word we uh, get to use a lot around here, unless you're talking about sourwood trees. But, but anyway, really interesting uh, bloom. And, and, you know, the, these trees really stand out this, this time of year uh, just because, because there's so many blooms on the, on the trees. The fruit is a capsule. It's a quarter to a half inch long. They, uh, they ripen September to October, and the seeds will sl uh, slowly break away through the winter and, uh, and are dispersed just by gravity and wind. They're, uh, they, they don't transplant very well unless you get really young saplings. Uh, this picture here is uh, of, of some that somebody's planted in a row and uh, to, I believe these would be too old to transplant. You would want some younger ones. Here we see the uh, native range of the sourwood. It's the basically the uh, southeastern U.S. The hardiness zone are uh, uh, five through nine. And you can read somewhere perhaps perhaps four, part of four, maybe two. So uh, th these could be grown in a, a large part of the country. You just want to uh, uh, pay attention to the uh, soil conditions. They, they, uh, they like uh, soil conditions that are similar to blueberries. If you're familiar with growing blueberries, they, they really like an acidic soil condition with uh, some sandy, well-drained soils. Fall color is spectacular. Um, you can see mainly red here, but uh, they, there can be a range, red, crimson, purple, even sometimes yellow, all on the same tree. Uh, looking at uh, Frank Chapman Pellet's book from 1920, uh, there were some interesting comments about the uh, sour wood, and I won't read the whole thing to you, but I, there was just a part of it I wanted to share with you here. and. He said, uh, sourwood honey ranks high both in quality and in quantity of yield. Many people regard it as the finest honey produced in America. The bloom lasts from two to three weeks and comes in midsummer when bees have ample time to build up maximum strength for the flow. So if you're fortunate to have sourwood trees, you know, they're, they're generally going to bloom this time of year and your, your colonies are going to be really strong. Going on down a little farther here, it says a, a lady beekeeper writing from North Carolina stated in the American Bee Journal that she had never known it to fail. An average of as high as 75 pounds per colony from sourwood has been reported and the local demand usually takes it all at prices above the open market. And keep in mind, folks, you can uh, download you a free copy of, of American Honey Plants and several other classic books that are available in the public domain. You can find those at the Strathcona Beekeepers Library. Uh, Dr. Francis Porcher, uh, an American Civil War doctor and botanist wrote, the leaves when chewed allay thirst, a decoction of the bark and leaves is also given as a tonic, end quote. In the Old South, it's a folk remedy for kidney and bladder issues, fever, diarrhea, and dysentery. The uh, Cherokee and Catawba Indians used the sourwood limbs to make arrow shafts. Here's a picture of, uh, of some modern day arrow shafts made by an enthusiast that, that he used uh, sourwood limbs. Well, there you have it, folks. 
Just a little bit more information about Sirewood that you may or may not have known. I really appreciate y'all watching my videos. And uh, if if you haven't subscribed, please do. I, it really helps me out. And uh, hit that like button. But uh, stay tuned. Uh, what I got coming up really soon, I had planned to do basswood uh, before I did uh, sirewood. However, I'm not lucky enough to have any basswoods really uh, close to the house here. An old uh, dear friend of mine, uh, a soil scientist, that's very familiar with the all the different tree species around and their uh, correlation to the different soil types that they grow on. I thought to give him a call, and he said, uh, "He said, yeah, Johnny, you, you can find those between 1,300 and 1,600 feet elevation around here on the north and west facing slope. So he, uh, he's he got some property where he knows there are some. So hopefully here really soon I'm going to be able to, uh, to get out there with him and get some video footage of the basswood tree. But uh, And also, too, uh, a, a couple of neighbors of mine grew up in the logging in industry. Their, their father was a logger. Their grandfather was a beekeeper. And they've got some wonderful stories about about the grandfather coming out and, and, and getting the bees when they would uh, find a bee tree in the woods and, and how many hives he had. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, that's that, that should be coming up in the near future as well. Again, thanks so much. And uh, may God bless you. God bless your family. And God bless your bees.